Frames of reference. Uh, so far, we've been focusing on communicating motion, but we haven't discussed who's doing the communicating. How does a person's frame of reference affect the motion they observe and communicate? Uh, here's our objectives. Be able to define frame of reference, transform from one frame of reference to another, and finally be able to simplify problems using frame of reference change. Here's our pages, 124 through 131. Uh, for the readers out there, we here's what we're going through. You can pause that um, to take a look. Here's the words we're going to be using. We've got to know what a frame of reference is, and that's just the point of view that affects how a person measures and reports motion. Transformation, that's changing uh, from one reference frame to another. Why do we have to learn this? Uh, we haven't talked about who actually observes all the motions we're talking about because it does change. What looks like uh, 10 meters per second to me looks like zero to you, perhaps. So we're going to take a look at that and how that all works. Uh, we assumed that it was us and we were standing still on the earth. Turns out that if we're moving, we would observe different motions than we are if we we're standing still. And if we move differently, we would see motions again different. If you move differently, you see other objects moving differently. If we move differently, we would see motions again different. It's a pretty important concept. So we have, we have to get into the habit of defining our frame of reference um, because it really does depend on um, how we're looking at it to tell if, we're, if we've got the right answer or not. So we have a velocity meter. A velocity meter measures velocity. It's important to know the tools that we use. Um, so velocity meter. We've got a sensor on the left, a sensor on the left. When an object goes through one sensor, it's going to start this timer. And then when it goes through the next sensor, it's going to stop the timer. If you know the distance between the two and you have the time, distance, time, we can get velocity. So here we go. This is a, an object moving across the screen. Here's our first uh, sensor. You see it starts as soon as the ball crosses this line right here. The grid squares are one meter wide. The sensors are six meters apart. The bullet travels five meters per second. So when the meter sees the bullet, it takes 1.2 seconds to go the six meters between the, the uh, sensors. So the meter automatically will divide it, whether you're using a computer or a lab quest, to get you the velocity of five meters per second. Happens all at the same time. What if the sensor moves? So we're looking at this more um, in depth than the video we watched. If it takes longer to go through the sensors, so remember it starts right here and it stops right here, then that means you're going to have a different velocity. One point five seconds instead of one point two seconds. The extra time makes the bullet take one point five seconds. Uh, so we 